This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, a young man appears in court charged with murder. We have the latest from his hearing. We meet the local academic who's been awarded half a million dollars for research that could change lives. And Health in the Pacific is getting special attention over summer as part of a career development plan. Good evening Dunedin, I'm Rebecca Dupree. A young Dunedin man charged with murdering an older local woman has appeared in court and been remanded in custody. The accused was granted interim name suppression and is due to appear in court at the beginning of February. His arrest follows a large police investigation, but officers are staying tight-lipped. A murder case is before the Dunedin District Court. This is where a 20-year-old local man appeared before a judge this morning, charged with murdering 51-year-old Dunedin woman Corinne Ann Ross. The accused, who works as a cleaner, wore a black Ford racing t-shirt when he appeared in the dock. No plea was entered to the single charge, which carries a maximum penalty of life imprisonment. It's early days in the court case and most details are still suppressed from the public. The accused has interim name suppression and that's likely to remain until his next court appearance here in Dunedin on February the 2nd. He was remanded in custody and will most likely be taken to the Otago Corrections Facility in Melbourne. That's where he's likely to stay while his lawyer applies for electronically monitored bail. This is where the murder victim's body was discovered at about 2am on December the 2nd. It's the Strathallen Street car park of the company she worked for, Spotless Cleaning Services. In the lead up to last night's arrest, police officers have been examining several local properties. They included this Nairn Street home where a co-worker of the victim is said to live. Police say while the matter is before the court, they won't be making any further comment on the case. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. The government has committed to reopening the South Dunedin Work and Income Office, which has been closed since June. The office in Hillside Road was damaged in the June flooding and repaired in July, but it's still shut. The closure forces residents to travel into the city to access the nearest Winds office. People have complained over the last few months, says the government wouldn't answer questions about whether it would reopen the office. Dunedin South MP Claire Curran recently weighed into the debate, calling on the Ministry of Social Development to respond. She says the electorate has more than 18,000 people on income support. The office will open next year. A local academic has been awarded half a million dollars to help aid her brain tumour research. The University of Otago Senior Research Fellow is studying outcomes for tumour patients and the funding is set to change lives. Searching for a cure. This researcher is looking for ways to help in the fight against brain tumours. She's one of the latest grant recipients from the Health Research Council. So this is the Sir Charles Herkes Fellowship, so I'm actually in the Herkes building. And so it's a Health Research Fellowship, which gives me half a million dollars over four years to support my career to establish it in health research. Dr Sladder has been working on her research for five years. Her study is centred on improving the outcomes for people with tumours and finding prognostic markers to see how they develop. A large proportion of it is trying to understand why some people respond very well to the current um, therapies that are in use and some people don't. So the idea is that we use a lot of genetic um, tests to try to um, group tumours and to get a greater understanding of who will benefit and who won't and try to suggest new therapies for those that don't currently benefit. This is the only research of its kind to receive funding from the Health Research Council. Study into brain tumours is progressing and Dr Slatter hopes her large financial boost will assist the cause. Internationally we're now getting a much greater understanding that everybody's tumours are different. So you might get the same diagnosis but they're actually very different. So we're understanding, we're trying to personalise medicine. So we're trying to understand how an individual's tumour should be treated. The Sir Charles Herkes Fellowship is the biggest in a series of grants awarded to the University of Otago. 
More than $1.5 million has been given to the institution for health research in the latest grants. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. Prime Minister John Key is planning to spend the day in Dunedin tomorrow. Details about his visit are being kept secret by his staff. All they will reveal is he'll be spending the day in Dunedin, attending a number of events, including a charity dinner. They say the Prime Minister won't be talking to media and all his scheduled visits are private. It's not clear whether he'll be staying in the city tomorrow night. The Prime Minister has recently been participating in global climate change talks in Paris. Budding Dunedin tertiary researchers have received funding as part of a nationwide career development program. They have secured more than, the, more than half of the Health Research Council's latest Pacific grants and their work will be filling a vital gap. A helping hand for budding researchers. These grant recipients are preparing for their summer research projects that have been made possible by funding from the Health Research Council. We're really excited because um, out of the HRC uh, Pacific funding that was given this year, there was 36 overall and we managed to scoop 20 of them, so we're feeling pretty proud of ourselves at Otago. Grants have been awarded to help Pacific Island students develop their research skills through a 10-week summer project. David Nair is one of the recipients who will be working on research into alcohol and Pacific Island communities. He's looking forward to working alongside specialised researchers and learning the key skills. My project is about Pacific youth and looking at alcohol, uh, I guess, behaviours and consumptions and some of the factors that influence our drinking patterns and ready to find out what Pacific youth, how we drink and, and why we drink. Pacific research has been growing in the country alongside the increasing Pacifica population. University staff say there's a real need for more Pacific health research and these grants will assist in making that happen. It's a real priority area, um, so when you're looking at trying to find a solution for a health issue, um, some of the best information about that comes from the community themselves. So if we have our own researchers who can go into a community who can speak the language, uh, you get much more rich information which, which you can develop your programs around. More than $200,000 will go towards the local research projects. They also include a master's study into mental health and a postdoctoral study app for houses and households. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, we'll find out how to stay safe in the sun this summer and how the black caps are going down at the University Oval. Caltex North care more about you than just putting fuel in your tank. They care about you and your family. At the Caltex Valley Workshop, the skilled service team care about your safety, extending the life of your car and helping you live more economically. There's a range of modern equipment to give comprehensive warrant of fitness checks and servicing to your vehicle. Come visit your only local in North East Valley and receive 10% off when you book your warrant and service together. That's your friendly Caltex Valley Workshop, 134 North Road or book online at caltexvalley.co.nz. She's 21 metres long with a 6.7 metre beam. She can support diving, seafloor mapping and sampling, deep water measurements and has onboard laboratories. She has a range of a thousand nautical miles, which means the Polaris 2 can take your studies further than you ever thought possible. My name's Will Raymond and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books. With the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Congratulations, you're getting married. Hi, I'm James Morris, wedding celebrant, and it's my privilege and a pleasure to bring you the perfect ceremony for your perfect day. Don't wait or contemplate. Your consultation is free with no obligation. James Morris. 
www.surfsurf.co.nz. Granddad loved his family and surfing in that order. He taught me to surf and we spent a lot of time in the water together over the years. When he died, I strapped the camera to the nose of his old board and filmed the paddle out at St. Clair. Gillian's played the video on the big screen at his funeral. Grandad would have loved having everyone come out one last surf for them. Gillian's Funeral Services, helping families celebrate the lives of their loved ones for generations. Gillian's.co.nz at your locally owned and operated Veggie Boy store, we've got fresh produce daily, fruit, veggies and more. Competitive prices are just one of the reasons people come to us in all seasons. Convenient locations and friendly crew, Veggie Boys Dunedin, come try something new. Stores in the north, the south, be our guests, centre city as well to serve you the best. Daily specials on produce that are hard to beat, all tasty and healthy and all good to eat. Don't forget, we've also got your milk, bread and meat, Veggie Boys Dunedin, your guaranteed a treat. Pallet fires are growing in popularity in Otago with people who want a clean and efficient form of home heating. The sight of a burning flame without the problems of chopping, stacking and carting wood around is a winner. Pallet fires. So easy, so efficient. Chiropractic care is a drug-free way of sorting out stress and pain by getting your spine in line with body and brain. At Mosdiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing, we provide family chiropractic care. Feel taller, lighter and brighter. Call Mosdiel Chiropractic and Wellbeing today for 84-7272. Welcome back. New Zealanders are continuing to spend more money than in previous years, as shown in the latest data from Statistics New Zealand. It reveals an increase in retail spending using electronic cards. Last month, just under $5 billion was spent, an increase of 3.7% compared to last November. The rise follows a static result in October and a smaller increase in September. On an industry level, hospitality is making the most gains. Retail spending has generally been rising since 2002. And on that note, let's take a look at today's financials. The ZX50 has closed the day down 13 points. It's now at 6,041. The Nikkei is down 224 points. And to the exchange rates, the uh, New Zealand dollar is down against the Australian, but we are up against the greenback, the yen, the pound and the euro. As the summer unfolds, Dunedin's temperatures are slowly rising and residents are spending more time outdoors. Otago Southland Cancer Society Chief Executive Mike Kernahan joins us to talk about sun safety. Good evening, Mike. Good evening. How can residents pre uh, prevent themselves from harmful damage from the sun? It is quite hot in this part of the world. Yeah, and heat's got little to do with it, which mm. is one of the misconceptions we have around the risk of, of sun. So really it's just the normal things, you know, covering up at the appropriate times, wearing a bit of sunscreen, putting on a wide floppy hat or a wide brimmed hat. What are the consequences of overexposure? <coughs> well, clearly sunburn, and we might talk about that in a minute, um, just what the consequences of that are further down the track. Uh, the skin ages much more quickly if you've been overexposed to sun, and obviously there's an increased risk of, of skin cancer. Mm. Are there guidelines for how much time in the sun is safe? Yes, there are, and it's all to do with the UV index. So the UV index starts to rise in September, peaks in January, and, and is back down to quite low levels by, by the beginning of April. So in this period which we're in now, the UV index can get quite high, and whether it's warm, cold, or whatever it is, if the UV index is high, then we are very much at risk of, of getting sunburned. What are the key messages that the society is promoting this summer? Well, we've already talked about it. It's the old slip, slap, slop and wrap. And uh, so I've talked about the clothing. I've talked about the, 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 the uh, wide brimmed hat, using sunscreen, put on some sunglasses. And if we do that typically between 10 and 4 mm. um, during the summer, Round about January when they're really high, you might want to extend that a little bit later, you know, 4.30 maybe. Um, but typically between 10 and 4, if we're, if we're looking after ourselves and, and covering up appropriately, then uh, we should be okay. 
Do we have lower rates of skin cancer down here? No, Some people no. would think we would because it's <coughs> colder. Exactly, and that's again one of the misconceptions. Mm. No, it is all about the UV index. We, you know, in 2013, which were the last statistics that um, have been published around uh, all the different cancer types, and in this case melanoma, which is the most serious of the skin cancers, there were 181 new diagnoses of melanoma in the southern DHB area out of 2,400. That's about 8% of the melanoma diagnoses in New Zealand. The population of the southern DHB is just over 7% mm -hmm. in terms of the national population. So that's about, you know, batting a thousand there. We, we, um, we're just as much at risk as anyone else in New Zealand. Mm. Do you think attitudes are changing towards sun exposure? Slowly. Mm. I think we have a program called SunSmart which is delivered into early childhood education primary schools and, I th and that's been going on for a long, long time now. And that is starting to, to change attitude, attitudes towards it. Um, you're also seeing in the workplace, and you may note when you're driving through to Central that a lot of workmen are wearing, um, they're wearing overalls now in the middle of the day, and that's just to cover up from the sun. They'll have on a wide brim hard hat rather than a cap. Uh, so even in the workplace, particularly those people who work outside a lot, they're getting, that message is slowly getting through. Certainly, I, I've noticed that the sun is a lot hotter now than it was, say, 10 years ago. Just the feeling of it on your skin, yeah, it's quite remarkable. That's the infrared rays. Mm. Um, and the UV, you can't feel the UV, you can't see it. And so people think when it's not hot that it's okay. Well, yeah. actually, they're just at risk when it's, you know, a, a southwesterly is blowing in the middle of January and it's maybe only 13 degrees, the UV index level might be quite high, so you're still very much mm. at risk. What are some of the misconceptions about sun damage? Um, <coughs> I think the challenge when we're young, and we've all been, well I'm certainly was a long time ago when I was <laughs> young, but when you're 15 through to 25 and you're out in the sun a lot and you want to be brown, you want to be cool and all that sort of thing, the misconception is that if you get sunburnt then you just get sunburnt and then it's okay, but the skin never forgets. No. So melanoma might not manifest itself for 20, 25, 30 years post that 15 to 25 year age group. So the more that you get sunburned and that you expose yourself to a lot of the UV um, rays over the course of your lifetime, the more at risk you're going to be later in life, as mm. the skin doesn't forget. Otago South and Cancer Society Chief Executive Mike Kernahan, thanks very much for your time. Merry no, Christmas. Thank you. you too. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, we'll have the latest from the test match at the University Oval and we'll find out what stories were making headlines in March. From the natural forests of New Zealand, Silverhorn sources active Manuka honey, a rich source of trace elements, vitamins, minerals and amino acids to naturally support your health, well-being and an active lifestyle. Buy one 250 gram pot for $34.90 and get a second pot for half price. Silverhorn Manuka honey. Call now 0800 502 402 or order online at silverhorn.co.nz. Here's something else to look forward to sinking your teeth into every weekend with the Otago Daily Times. The Weekend Mix, your guide to what's hot in fashion, entertainment, food and more. New Weekend Magazine in your ODT. Pick up your copy this Saturday. Pregnant? Need to talk? 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. McClellan Refrigeration is your one-stop shop for heat pumps in Dunedin. We have a range of heating, air conditioning and refrigeration solutions. We also have 20 years experience. McClellan Refrigeration, call us on 477 0088. Hedges are something we almost take for granted. A good hedge needs regular maintenance to look its best and to add value and character to your property. For all your hedge care needs, call the team at SGC Services on 0800 783 453.
Mobility scooters are targets. Mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary hard to find for your quality second hand books with the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. Mosgiel Mowers Plus can help you with products to make your garden maintenance jobs easier. Lawn mowers, ride-ons, chainsaws, line trimmers. Sales and service are our specialty. Mosgiel Mowers Plus. Phone 489 3572 22B Gordon Road, Mosgiel. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. They got all. It's all about our customer care. Great food, great coffee, and supported by some awesome staff. We think it's really important that the customers when they come in here have a good experience and leave wanting to come back. And I think, in a nutshell, that's what the good all is all about. Welcome back. A dozen people have been honoured with hero status in the Otago Regional Section of the New Zealander of the Year Awards. The 12 local Hero Award recipients were revealed at a ceremony in Dunedin last night. Among them was Tyree pilot Graham Gale, who's in charge of operating the Otago Regional Rescue Helicopter. Local magician and service station operator Jonathan Usher was also honoured for his extensive charity work. And the other heroes are from Queenstown, Wanaka, Alexandra, Kakanui and Omaru. All recipients were nominated by members of the community. The Black Caps are in a strong position as they near the end of the first day in their test against Sri Lanka at the University Oval. Just a short time ago, Martin Gupta was closing in on 150. He opened with Tom Latham after Sri Lanka won the toss and elected to field first. Captain Brenda McCullough made a quick fire 75 in front of a crowd of thousands. Forecast rain hasn't eventuated to the delight of local fans. There were just over 10 overs left to go in the day, with the score nearing 400 for six. Well, it's now time to take a look at what was making headlines in March. Residents were involved in several large conventions and social gatherings in the city. An attack on wildlife prompted a recovery effort, and tertiary students partied in public. Catching a wave. Local surfers gathered to mark a hundred years since the city was visited by the Hawaiian man credited with the sports development. The Duke Longboard Festival at St Clair also attracted dozens of spectators. We thought it was a fitting thing to do instead of celebrating a war to celebrate something that was really uh, a gift to the nation of New Zealand. Local self-described geeks and pop culture enthusiasts dressed up for the annual Armageddon Expo. It was the third time the event's been held in Dunedin, giving locals a chance to express the nerd culture through cosplay and gaming. Also in March, work began on a multi-million dollar science initiative at the University of Otago. Cabinet Minister Stephen Joyce launched the Ageing Well project, aiming to improve the lives of elderly residents around the country. From now until the end of the 2020s, we expect to go from having 650,000 people over the ages of 65 to over a million, and getting on towards a quarter of our population. And that, of course, brings lots of challenges, including uh, not least the long-term financial cost of the health care of, of people as they, as they age. Dunedin residents also walked their way into the history books, participating in the country's largest Relay for Life fundraising event. Thousands of locals collectively raised more than $200,000 for the Cancer Society during the 24-hour relay. Meanwhile, an unprecedented number of barracuda attacks on the local yellow-eyed penguin population concerned conservation workers. They helped nurse more than 50 injured birds back to health. 
Yellow penguins and barracuda feed on the same fish and they must be feeding in the same place. Apparently barracuda feed just by snapping and so they'll be a bit indiscriminate and so if penguins get in the way they get these lacerations. Dunedin political leaders and community heavyweights supported calls for the government to abandon the controversial Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement. About 1,500 people marched in protest against the deal. Well, everyone in New Zealand needs to worry about it because it's, actually, it's going to make it more difficult for us to have the laws that we want to protect our interests. More than $20,000 went to charity following an unconventional fundraising event. It involved the journey of thousands of bright yellow rubber ducks down the Leith waterway. And the iconic annual Hyde Street kick party finished off the month. Students attracted widespread public condemnation after a St John emergency vehicle was vandalised in the fracas and a dozen revellers were arrested. Annabelle Dick, 39 Dunedin News. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. A 20-year-old local man has appeared in court charged with murdering a 51-year-old Dunedin woman last Wednesday. A senior research fellow at the University of Otago has been awarded half a million dollars to further her study into brain tumours. And several local research projects about Pacific Health are being funded over the summer to fill a vital gap in the academic scene. It's time now to find out what's going to be in Friday's Otago Daily Times and the editor Barry Stewart joins us. Good evening. Hello Rebecca. Otago uh, councils are in discussions at the moment about how they can share services so uh, we follow that story. Um, noise complaints from cruise ship passengers has led to the DCC clamping down on buskers in the octagon. Oh. Too noisy apparently. Sunshine, a day off school, hot dogs, chips in cricket. What, what more could you ask for? We went down to the University Oval today and uh, wrote a, a colour story about the, about the crowd and the, and the kids enjoying the moment. So uh, big bunches, uh, a lot of children down there apparently. So mm. apparently the, um, the uh, Cricket Association gave tickets to schools so that uh, all, the, all the fans could get there. So it's a good oh, story. Brilliant. The Highlanders have confirmed that they are off to Hong Kong to play Dan Carter's uh, French club team. Ooh, read all about that in tomorrow's ODT. Yep. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Time now for local weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Manuka Honey. And here is today's City Viewers taken of clouds and sunshine. Very, very important. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 19 degrees for the central city and the Tyree, 21 at the gardens. Well, to the situation, and a milder northwest flow will develop again tomorrow. A trough of low pressure will move over the country this weekend. It's followed by a southwest flow. To the forecast for some of the main towns in the Lower South Island for tomorrow, northwest is with some cloud for Invercargill and Tianau, both expecting 19 degrees. Fine weather in Gore with northwest is a high of 20 there, and a fine day awaits Alexandra with 23 degrees. Fine for Queenstown, Wanaka and Twizel, all on 23 degrees. Fine in Omaru with nor'easters and a high of 20. In Dunedin tonight, we're expecting it to remain fine with a low of 7. Fine and sunny tomorrow with high cloud developing later in the day. Nor'easters and a high of 19. And on Saturday, cloud increasing with scattered rain later on. Strong north to northwest winds. Cool south westers and showers are due at night, 18 degrees. And to the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, low tide tomorrow morning is at a quarter past 11. And fishing conditions look pretty good tomorrow afternoon, particularly around 10 past 1. That's local news for Thursday. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.